During the earlier part of 2020, there was a Nintendo Direct which, among other things, announced a little title called Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics, which was set to release that summer. A sequel to a cult classic DS game, which is a chill collection of cardboard and tabletop games, which also has online multiplayer? SIGN ME THE HECK UP! While I really didn't have a reason to pass it up at launch, I just didn't get around to it till recently. Cue me and my older brother spending the better part of a Saturday just playing Yacht Dice. There's something about this game that just feels so special, and it helps to set it apart from other Switch titles and just make it feel right at home on the system. Yeah, bear with me for a minute. A key aspect of the standard Switch's hardware are the Joy-Con. Slot them either in the grip or on the console to play solo with a standard controller layout, or hand someone to someone nearby to do multiplayer. Most Switch games let you do this, whether it's a more accessible and popular game like Mario Kart, or a more niche and technical game like Pikmin. The fact that two of these come with every system means that game developers can tailor experiences around the concept of sharing the joy. A launch title that tried exactly that absolutely sucked. One Two Switch, it's just as fun as a colonoscopy. It's just a soulless collection of minigames that served no real purpose other than to demonstrate what these fancy new choking hazards were capable of. No really, try fitting one of these down your throat, I'm partial to the blueberry ones myself. You will tire of all these games fairly quickly after booting it up for the first time, thanks to their lack of substance. After you've played a game once, there's really no incentive to go back. But, with Clubhouse, these are tried and tested games that are only enhanced by what the Joy-Con offer. Heck, many of these games can be controlled just with the touchscreen, meaning you don't always have to rip off your cons just to play some yacht dice with someone nearby. I think the biggest complaint about this title is the lack of games that can be played on a single system with three or four players. I don't really think that's a big deal. Much of these games are primarily traditional two-player board games or card games. While yes, they could have made some more games like Yacht Dice compatible with four players, but with that game in particular, it really hit me as to why they limit it to just a pair. That same weekend I bought the game, my family and I ended up pulling out our old version of Yahtzee because why not? There were four of us playing, and it took much longer than you'd think just for a single game, partially because one of us was learning the game for the first time, but mainly because there were four of us playing. Even when one of them went to bed, three players was still a bit much. Keeping a fast flow of gameplay by limiting many of the games like this just to two people just makes more sense. Yeah, even for bowling. I've just always hated bowling with a group larger than three or four, both in Wii Sports and in real life when that was socially acceptable. Has bowling ever been socially acceptable? In the time that it would take for me and three others to play a set of ten frames, I could have knocked out two or three whole games just by myself. Yeah, you could also strike up some conversation while you're waiting, but who really wants to do that when- I also appreciate how multiplayer is handled for the hand-based games like Poker and Not Uno. Of course, if you have friends with the game, you can just link up over the internet or local wireless and play that way. But if you want to play with people local to you who don't have the game who also own a Switch, just have them download the demo. That'll let them play the whole collection of multiplayer-centric games when doing local multiplayer. And it straight up lets you play four of the games for free if they're by themselves. Kinda sucks that this can't be used online with friends, but eh, what do you do? Speaking of what do I do, with these being classic tabletop games, there's a chance just about everyone has played one of these games at some point in their lives. Many of these games are simple enough to not really need that much of a tutorial, maybe just take a quick skim through the references. With that level of simplicity, and the fact that this game shows face button prompts with the Switch's simplified notation of where the button is rather than what is shown on the button, sets this up to be a game you can pull out in just about any social situation and have a blast with just about anyone, as long as it's safe to be around that person. You don't want to be halfway through a round of yacht dice with your new neighbor just to find out they got away with money laundering last week. But what if you've never played one of the games before? Well, there's a wealth of information for each game, particularly for the more complex games, to help ease and guide you before and as you play. Ooh, we don't speak of the videos that play before them. This game is like life. In what way? Because sometimes you gotta throw it all away, just on principle. There's even an undo button for some of the games, just in case you screw something up. I'd also say the price point is just about right. Far too often we've seen Switch games sell for $60 when they really should have been knocked down 10 or 20. This more accessible price helps to make the overall package just that more welcoming. 
And if you're the completionist type, you can collect medals for each game, which can be earned by beating the different CPU difficulties, earning a certain amount of points in each variant of a game, and so on. Even though there are two games in particular that require motion controls when playing Doctor Tabletop, they're actually controlled via a touchscreen when playing in handheld mode, which is nice, especially for you Switch Lite owners out there, as that still makes every game playable to you if you're playing solo. These are also the only two games that are not playable with the Pro Controller in solo play. Oh yeah, unless everyone's on their own system, the game forces you to use a single Joy-Con in any form of multiplayer. Kinda dumb, but I have other things to be angry about. It's pronounced SAUNA! With how well it fits on Nintendo Switch, it's kind of a shame that it's yet to be part of any system bundle. It's way more deserving to be a pack and title than this piece of sh** tech demo that some people said should have been a pack net launch. Overall, I think this is the quintessential Switch game, partially for the fact that it's a much better showcase of the Joy-Con than 1-2-Switch ever could have dreamed of, as well as how accessible it is to just about everyone. Except Richie Mahjong, what the hell is going on there?